ഹലോ ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് വെൽക്കം ടു ജോവ ഇ ഇ സൗലേറ്റ്സ് ലേണിംഗ് സീരീസ് സോ ഇൻ ദിസ് എ സബ് സീരീസ് വി ആർ ഗോയിങ് ടു ലുക്ക് ആറ്റ് സൗലേറ്റ് കോൺടാക്സ്റ്റ് ദർ ആർ ത്രീ പാർട്ട് ഇൻ ദിസ് വീഡിയോ യു ആർ ആറ്റ് പാർട്ട് വൺ നൗ ഹിയർ വി വിൽ ലേൺ ദി കോൺസെപ്റ്റ്സ് ഓഫ് സൗലേറ്റ് കോൺടാക്സ്റ്റ് so let us say this is the wild fly servlet container the servlet container can be any implementation by the vendor so the vendor can be tomcat wild fly oracle web logic or web sphere so inside the servlet container we may have multiple web applications so we know that a servlet container can i mean the um wild fly container may have or any other vendor specific container jte container may have multiple web applications so here you can see four application web application and this one is the web application we are creating uh, in this uh, web series so we have been uh, using this servlet examples uh, web app uh, the version 3.1 we have chosen so this is one of such uh, web application and a web application can have multiple servlets so if you can see here we have multiple servlets running inside this servlet examples likewise the container web container may have multiple these are all different web application right so each web application may have uh, a number of servlet so each web application will have one instance of servlet context so all the servlet share this same servlet context so inside this servlet context it can hold different objects and so these objects are shared among these servlets so if you consider here we have four servlet let us say all four servlet share these servlet context and inside the servlet context whatever we store that is available for all the servlet so here we are considering only one web application one application one web application hold one servlet context and the servlet context is common for all the servlet which which is hosted inside a web application so likewise if we have other web application they have their own servlet context and if this uh, web application has uh, some of uh, five or uh, six servlets then all six servlet share the servlet context that belongs to this uh, web application all right now we will see how to get the servlet context object so there are two way one you can get it from the servlet init method so the init method takes so whenever we create servlet um, we have the option to override service do get do post as well as init so when you override init you will get servlet config so do not confuse the servlet config with the uh, servlet context both are different object from this servlet config you can actually get the servlet context using the so this method will return you the servlet config sorry servlet context 
so this is one way the other way is so we know that the base class for the servlet we create let's say this is our servlet when we create the servlet we derive it from http servlet and http is actually derived from generic servlet so we can make a call to generic servlet member function get servlet context so this method we can call from here itself because of inheritance so one is getting it from the servlet config uh, and we can get servlet context by making call to servlet config dot get servlet context or you can use the inherited member get servlet context to uh, get a reference to the uh, servlet context object so that means if you have do get or do post you can make a call to get servlet context and you can get the servlet context object in hand so any servlet can call and the get servlet context will return same object to all the servlet which is running in a particular web application so if you see here we have demonstrated five web application right and then we have four sext object actually totally five and this servlet context object is shared by all the servlet running inside the web application same goes for other application hosted by the vendor specific container so we know that all the servlets running inside a web application will share the same servlet context all right so we can set an object inside this servlet context using the first we have to get the servlet context then we can make use of the function set attribute so all the servlet can use the set attribute they can specify a token then they can store the object uh, inside the servlet context so let's say we stored three object using the set attribute so any servlet can store the object like this and since these objects are shared so if you want to remove the object from the servlet context then we can use remove attribute function okay so the set hand remove is used to add or remove objects from the servlet context so how do we get the object so we will use there are two methods actually we can store this object inside this outlet context using the set attribute or you can even store it using the web.xml so if you use web.xml then you can retrieve this servlet object using get init parameter so this is for web xml version so from web xml if you want to get then you can use the get init parameter and you can get the um servlet context object 
or you can also use get attribute method here we use the set attribute right so the there is a getter version you can use that so whether the object is set to the servlet context using uh, web.xml or uh, a set attribute it is shared to all the servlet so if we stored some uh, uh, servlet context using the web.xml then it is available to all the servlet through getting it parameter but if we set it using the set attribute we can use it's a getter version and you can retrieve the uh, stored object inside the servlet context so both the members are available for i mean the both the function is available for all the servlet and the servlet can access the objects in the servlet context using any of these two methods and also it shares the same servlet context so the object is available to all the servlet so if there are 10 objects all 10 objects are available to all 10 servlets so in this example we are not going to retrieve the uh, servlet context um, servlet context object using web.xml but we will have a look at how the objects are um, stored using the web.xml so we have to use the context param in our web.xml param hyphen name So here is the content of web.xml. We have a context param. Inside that we store application version. So the param name, what we have given is app version. You can give any string. Then param value is 7.2.4. So in the previous slide, we saw how to get the um, servlet context uh, objects from the web.xml so all you have to do is we have to use the get init param method and you can pass the param name here to retrieve the param value so once you pass this it will retrieve param value so you will get application version So let's understand what is a servlet context and a servlet config. So in this video, we are uh, um, exploring about servlet context. So in the previous video, we looked at servlet config. I mean, so we can watch uh, video number uh, three to know how we initialize the servlet using the servlet config and there's a second video shows how we can do the same using deployment descriptor so this one is web module version 3.1 and this one is a older version 2x something so you can watch the video to learn about how servlet config works so now in this video since we are looking at servlet context now let us understand how we can use both servlet context and servlet config. So Let's consider that this is our servlet examples web application. Inside this web application, we have four servlet. In the previous slide, we saw that all these four servlet can access a single servlet context object. So inside the servlet context, you can store a number of 
objects using the set attribute method or even using the web.xml file so all these objects are share here if you see there are let's consider there are five object all these five objects are shared by all these uh, servlet that means one servlet context object and if an object is stored then there is one object and that one object is read or write by four servlet but each servlet will maintain its own servlet config so if you see let's take a servlet 2 servlet 2 can own its own servlet config that means the configuration which is specific to servlet 2 is used in the servlet config so in the servlet config you can specify the settings that is related to this specific servlet but all the servlet step shares the servlet context that means the properties of web application which is common to all the servlet can be stored inside the servlet context so that's the difference so each servlet will have its own servlet config so in this video we saw how to use the servlet initializing parameter using the servlet config so here in the servlet context the objects are common for all the servlet so in the previous slide we saw how we configured a web.xml and that we stored application version i mean the web app version so the web app version let's say so this is the object that is storing the web app version so this object is common to all the servlet through servlet context that means all the servlet can access the same um, version or when they read this they will get the same application web application version here servlet config cf1 is specific to servlet1 servlet2 cannot access a cf1 because cf1 belongs to servlet1 so so that's the difference you have to understand that's all the concept around servlet context Thank you for uh, watching. In the next video, we will create an example and that will give more insight towards the servlet context. Thank you again. Bye.